The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Benjamin J. Heckendorf. Every week he takes on new projects, shares tips and tricks, and answers your viewer questions on The Ben Heck Show. Hello and welcome back to the Ben Heck Show. In today's episode, we're discussing programming languages, specifically the types of languages that are out there, which ones are the best for getting started, and how they interact with your CPU or microcontroller. Let's get started. But first, the news. Today in Ben News, uh, we've started to mass produce ghosts for the Ghost Squad pinball machine, which we're now calling America's Most Haunted. So they're made out of glow-in-the-dark plastic and you know at least once a day I try to run my MakerBot replicator. So it prints me off a uh, ghost. So I can just click the button and ghosts continue to come out of it. We hope to start production of the ghost pinball machine later this summer. So we've got to start making our custom toys with a 3D printer. Um, it's not the fastest way to make these, but it's cheaper than making like a, uh, a tool for it. The first type of language we're going to talk about is an interpreted language. An interpreted language is compiled basically as it runs. Popular examples include BASIC, Beginner's All-Purpose Symbolic Instruction Code. Uh, we use that language on the Pocket Basic computer episode, for instance. Python, uh, which is kind of a new hip language these days. Uh, we see it a lot on the Raspberry Pi. We used it on the Raspberry Pi based dog treat dispenser. Uh, Perl's another example. Perl is used a lot on websites. The thing that's great about interpreted languages is they're easy for beginners to get started with programming. All the basics are there. Uh, they don't run so fast, but you still learn how to program. And even if you are an experienced programmer, using an interpreted language is a fast way to get something up and going. Like if you just want to get some code running on the Raspberry Pi, use Python like we did with the dog treat dispenser. Now let's talk about how the interpreted language works internally inside the computer system. An interpreted language consists of many lines of code. In order for a CPU to execute them though, they must be turned into machine code, the kind of commands a CPU can use. This is done line by line as the program runs by the compiler or as you directly enter commands. Thus an interpreted language is easier to get going but runs much slower. The next type of languages we're going to talk about are high-level languages. These are languages that are written out in a conversational form, however they're compiled into bytecode to run on your computer. Examples include C and C++, you know, two of the most popular languages that are out today. COBOL, good old school COBOL, still around. Java isn't always compiled, sometimes it's interpreted at runtime, but you can also compile it, like on your Android phone. Uh, so this is good for intermediate users, once you've learned the basics, ha ha ha. You can move on to this kind of stuff. It's very common, I mean, between C and plus plus and Java, I mean, that's like pretty much everything in the world. Uh, works on many devices, you know, Java is on you know, all our Android phones, all the web pages. C++ runs pretty much any application you might use on your computer. Most of our embedded code programs use C or C++ or a form of it called wiring. So yeah, it's very common. So now let's talk about how these high level languages work at the low compiler level. Once a high-level language program is written, it goes through a compiler, which checks for errors and translates your program into machine code. Unlike an interpretive language, the entire program is compiled at once, which makes it execute much faster. It is not done line by line. The resulting compiled machine code is actually what gets sent to your CPU. It's no longer human readable, but it's great for machines. Let's use 3D printing as an example of the difference in speed between an interpreted language like Python and a compiled language like C. I'm going to start with Replicator G. Replicator G is like an older program that's used to slice 3D prints and it uses Python based SchemeForge to do it. So when I click on this and I tell it to slice the model, it starts doing it using the Python based slicer. And as you can see, it takes quite a long time because you know Python is an interpreted language. Now let's try it with Makerware. Makerware is a program made by uh, the MakerBot guys and you know it's written in C++ so it has a much faster slicer. So when we go to slice the same object in this program, um, it still takes a while but it goes through it much faster than the Python language did. Again this is an example of how a compiled language is more efficient than an interpreted one. There's so many connectors. Audio visual adapters. Fast plane connectors. Shakya. Memory sockets. Coaxial. It's hard to keep them all straight. Beats of miniature. Fiber optic. I.O. All right. There's basically a bajillion of them. Like this and this. So, so many. 
I can't even name them all. The third type of language we're going to talk about is a low-level language. Now this would be something that's very close or low to the CPU's own workings. So that's usually assembly or assembler. There's different ways to call People call it either or. And that's kind of what you write. You know, you'd be like LDA, X23, STA, 54, 18. It's stuff like that. And that's compiled into machine code, which is just a bunch of zeros and ones, or rather byte codes, that are run by the CPU. But this is already pretty close to what the machine does. Basically, the compiler just switches this over to all numbers so the machine can understand it. So it's very difficult and more advanced to write this way. And it's processor specific. You know, you basically have to know what processor you're writing it for. Uh, it's not as portable as other languages are. However, you gain speed and efficiency. Let's talk about assembly to machine code from a low level compiler point of view. Like other languages, assembly still needs to go through a compiler, which converts the symbols to their machine code equivalents. Since the translation is almost one-to-one, -one, the result is very speedy and efficient machine code. An assembly programmer has a very good idea of how many machine cycles their program code will actually consume. I'm going to use this pinball display as an example of speed with C++ compiled versus straight machine language. Now this is it running with a uh, compiled language. Uh, it works, but it's kind of flickery because the language, even though it's compiled, it can only go so fast. But if you use machine language, it'll be a lot more efficient and fast. I'll do the example next. Now I'm going to upload the machine code version and watch the difference. It updates so fast, not only do you not see any flickering, but the shading works really well too because the shading is actually created by the rate at which you pulse it. It's basically be doing software PWM, but machine language is fast enough for that. So that's a great example of the speed difference you can gain. So there you have it, an example of three different types of programming languages. Hopefully this gave you a good idea of how they work, the differences between them, and which one is right for you and your projects. Today's viewer question comes from Steven who asks, can I use some old stepper motors I have lying around to build a CNC machine? Possibly, but they should all be the same size and type, and they also need to be big enough to move things around. You'll also need to check what type they are. Six wires are unipolar, four wires are bipolar. That's all the time we have for today. In our next episode, Allison and I will work together to create a bionic bike bag using the Arduino lily pad. We'll see you then. Stay tuned at element14.com forward slash TBHS where you can join the discussion, suggest builds for the show, and even have a chance to win upcoming builds. Remember, you can always email build ideas to benheck at element14.com. Thanks for watching.